So today we want to speak about uh, the transformation that's happening on the planet. That we're moving into an age of transformation and we can see new problems, new situations occurring. Uh, the COVID-19 is a perfect example of this where the stages of development that we have at the moment on the planet uh, are not wide enough to be able to solve the problems that we're going to encounter. And there's a new level of consciousness coming onto the planet now called Integral, which uh, is hopefully going to help in creating solutions to more worldwide problems that we're encountering. So this theory has different uh, tools and maps inside of it in Integral Theory. And one of the maps we're going to be using uh, is called the quadrants. So this quadrant, we're going to look at the coronavirus through four different lenses, four different aspects of reality called the four quadrants. So these quadrants are created by uh, recognizing that there's an inner and an exterior reality. And there's also an individual and a collective reality. And so we're going to be looking at what that creates four different separate realities which become lenses for us to look at any problem that emerges. Through the different stages of development that we've had so far, there are different preferences for one of those quadrants, one of those realities. And we tend to reduce reality down to that, saying that's most true, dismissing the others. As we come into integral consciousness, it follows the name, it begins to integrate all of the previous stages of existence. And it integrates the different dimensions of this world, saying we recognize and value all of them. So it's a, a larger way to include more of the cosmos in our understanding, in our actions and behaviors. So me and Ria did an analysis of the coronavirus looking through these four quadrants to help us get the best perspective possible one that was the most whole. Um, and these quadrants, uh, although they come from the access, we've got the inside of the individual, which is your feelings, your emotions, your thoughts, sensations, things that you cannot cut up an individual and look through a microscope and see that are there. They have to tell you. It's a subjective experience. Um, on the outside of the individual, then we've got facts, we've got science, we've got uh, behaviors, we've got observable things we can see and measure. Now this is also true for the collective. We've got an internal cultural belief system, relationships, uh, shared senses of meaning. And we also have external systems and ways that things, individual things, work together as part of larger organisms. So when we were looking at the coronavirus through this, we started to put the different aspects into these four different dimensions, these four different quadrants. And so, would you like to say something before we look at that? Yes. First of all, I want to say um, that this four quadrants is, was made by Ken Wilber. And um, what is important is that in that is that we don't have to necessarily choose which one is more important, which quadrant is more important, which aspect is more important. The ultimate idea of it is just to be able to see all of them. And this is what makes a huge difference. Then you don't have to choose anything. What is more important for you if it's the action or emotions or relationships? So we're using the coronavirus as an example, but I believe that we're going to become in contact with more and more global challenges uh, in the next few years. Things to do with climate change, political structures, other viruses, other things are going to emerge. Uh, and so it's, it's a really beautiful tool to help navigate. We can use it as a compass to help find our way through challenging times. Um, so we looked at it and we, we thought like, so what are the things that are alive um, let's say in the, the exterior of the individual, what is the facts, what are the science? So sometimes in the postmodern world, this gets thrown out, they, they look at science, look at medicine as something 
from the modern world and so therefore they reject it and they often throw the baby out of the bathwater. There's some very important realities there and we've been confronted with this on a global scale. So the exterior of the individual, well that's our immune system. Our physical immune system, how it responds, uh, that's something even though it's inside our body, it's something we can observe and measure. So the immune system is there. Yes. Um, so definitely everything that regards to our behavior. So how do we uh, take care of ourselves on the physical level? So we will be wearing masks. We will be drinking a lot of water, supporting our uh, immune system with vitamin C's, with uh, other supplements or maybe natural antivirus um, substances or products like garlic, ginger and so forth. So this will be everything that um, all the actions that we need to do because we hear the informations and we regard to them this is our action in order to take care of ourselves so so of course face masks washing hands all our behavior there uh, as well as that we have the facts of the virus so we don't know all of these yet but how does it spread does it survive in heat we're in costa rica just now <laughs> um how is it going to mutate how is that going to affect uh, is it something that we can gain immunity to or can it repeat itself? These questions are still being found out at the moment and there's different scientific ideas around uh, this and we're, we're finding it out. So let's move over. So that's, that's the facts there. But what do we feel about it? What, with all this information, like what's that creating inside of us? Uh, for many of us it might be panic, anxiety, fear sense of helplessness what are the yeah. things that you discover inside well for sure this um, uh, overview uh, perspective where I find trust actually in this whole madness and uh, find peace that is coming through the meditation and that uh, the whole process that I'm having around the, the first is anxiety and then underneath as I go deeper I can find this peace and to this whole area into this quadrants no one can have access to it's just the inner process that only we can ex we can experience and we can uh, feel so what are some of the things we can do in the inner well we can meditate we can try and reduce stress because the inner reality, our thoughts, emotions and feelings are actually not completely separate from the outer experience of the body. They are connected in some way. And so we can strengthen our immune system by remaining calm. Actually fear creates more cortisol and actually weakens the immune system. So it's not that they're completely separate, they have influence over each other. Um, it's an amazing time for transformation. Everything's coming to a stop having to look inside what do we do it's a point of re-evaluation on a global scale that I've not seen before it's we, yes. we do this in smaller groups and vision quests where you have that chance but this is like a global vision quest that's happening just now mm. so let's look at it in terms of the culture um, what's happening in terms of relationships people want to get close to family um, people have different cultural points of view and things and the information that are coming in mm. how do we trust it what who do we believe and that depends very much on our internal belief systems and our cultural viewpoint we might have a big distrust of governments and therefore uh, the information that we're most open to is this is a big conspiracy they're trying to lock us down and they'll vaccinate us and put chips in us or or that it's a biological weapon or all the other theories that we can hear or we might have complete uh, trust and belief in the media as it comes into us Fox News or CNN or the BBC we might take everything that they say as law uh, so where do we fit on that scale how do we find out what's true mm -hmm. Um, and what happens when our core beliefs are confronted? Maybe we thought we could just um, drink colloidal silver and meditate and it would go away. And maybe we see actually 
that isn't the case. And so where do we change our belief systems around that? Where are we confronted? It can also set, create a sense of unity. It can bring us closer together. We're all in this together. Or maybe we go the opposite way and we start to discriminate. This foreign virus, this Chinese flu, <laughs> there's been attacks on Asians uh, in the streets in, in America and also in the UK. So it can bring out racism or it can bring out a sense of more unity. It is also bringing like a physical isolation because we hear that we cannot touch each other, that we should be really aware of the virus being spread so we're not shaking hands, it's, we're not hugging, so it does bring also this kind of isolation uh, in between people. Yeah, and so that might be a bit more on the exterior of the individual, but actually touch, contact has an effect on your immune system, mm -hmm. so like when we separate that completely, it's important to still have those messages coming into our body, into our unconscious that we are loved, uh, which helps produce more uh, better hormones in the body to support the immune system. So let's look at the systems. So uh, what's happening just now, we have a global closing of borders, uh, systems of transport, uh, it's having a massive effect on the global economy. Um, we have the World Health Organization, which are giving out a lot of facts and helping governments, systems of governance to make decisions. Uh, is there going to be cooperation between countries or is it just every kind of nation for themselves? <laughs> what might be the political motivations underlying this? How does social media have an effect? We were in an age that in the Spanish influenza, they didn't have social media to inform in such a quick way. You can see the benefits of that. Maybe there's also some uh, misinformation as well. What about fake news that's being spread through that? Mm. So in general, <clears throat> it feels like, almost like in terms of the quadrants, it's like for all the people in the stage of development that is called orange, for example, this is for them to see that there is something much more than only the work, the money, and everything that regards the system. They can see that there are emotions also, that some people are saying that this virus is not only coronavirus, it's the fear virus that is really spreading very quickly. So then the people from that stage will have to expand and see that there is something much more than the world they were living in, while, for example, people from postmodern, who were, as you said, believing that, yeah, the coronavirus, we can only use the essential oils, you know, and yeah. then uh, do the circle and, and, it, and it will be healed. They can also see, well, great, but what would we do without the system right now? The system that is putting, like, it's really holding space for all of us and putting everything in order and actually organizing everything, like the health system, the politicians that are gathering and doing all kinds of things to, to make it all work once the whole machine that the universe, is, the, the pl our planet is, the whole machine just suddenly is stopping. And uh, are you a victim? Are you like a victim of the system or are you part of the system because the reality is you're not separate from the system well in all the different systems there's so many we're part of the cosmos all the ecosystems we're part of this very often we can give our power away to think that we just have to follow something else that we're helpless but we're actually all co-creating that system together mm -hmm. is the real reality and it shows us sorry it shows us also that we can actually count on the system you know that we can rely on them and when there is a, such a crisis that somehow we are making it work like the system is making it work mm. and systems transform as well then this might be an opportunity for us to become more wise more aware and to transform i saw a very interesting meme i don't really believe it but i love the idea of it saying that actually you know with the changes in climate change is we're not kind of traveling things and the positive uh, aspects of this that actually humans are the virus and the coronavirus is the is the treatment so yeah. it's 
interesting the different perspectives we can take on this. Because the thing is that we've been talking about the pollution, we've been talking about many things that are happening just now, and actually it's happening. Like it almost feels like the earth is taking care of herself by stopping everything. So suddenly the the air is the, the, the planes are not flying, the cars are not driving. So it's really cleansing. So those are some of the aspects and it's it's great for us to be able to look at this. Uh, and to feel more informed, to feel like we have a more balanced viewpoint. And what was emerging for me from all this was uh, this opportunity, uh, this interesting time that actually it feels like an opportunity to make the quantum leap into integral, if anything has been the place to do it, because this level of consciousness uh, and these tools are what are are going to help solve these global problems. We're living in global times now. There'll be more stuff like this. So it's a chance for us to to grow up in that sense of, of how we're looking at the world and how we're in it together and what solutions we need to put in place. Do we just protect our own country? Um, it's not going to help. We need to help the health systems all over the world because these epidemics are not choosing, they're not selecting just countries. This is a pandemic, so even if you have everything in place in your country and you're protecting those people, it's not going to stop the spread, let's be realistic. Mm. And climate change isn't going to be selective either. But also like Ken Wilber, what he is saying, it's like we are heading with our consciousness into integral, so then it would have been done like with a very slow steps or with like a big bang, big event like that, big, big uh, pandemic, that pandemia that is happening right now and that is actually forcing us somehow to look where we are at, to look at our lives and to reevaluate everything that, um, that surrounds us on every level. So you can find out more about integral theory by just type it in online, look up Ken Wilbur. Uh, this is called the Four Quadrants, this particular tool. There's five other tools that you can use in the actual map which they have. We teach this in Awaken as Love. It's part of the course. We're bringing Integral uh, to the planet in a very embodied way. So if you want to find out more about that, uh, you can look up awakenaslove.com. We have different retreats. We're going to have more online courses. And we invite you to wash your hands, wake up, and grow up. <laughs>